What's up, YouTube? Apple back um, with a special episode. So um, it is going to be my birthday here in a few days from recording this. And I thought I would do a special little episode of me looking stuff up. And so I decided to go down the rabbit hole that is birthdays. Um, wasn't expecting a lot. And surprisingly, I found a lot of information on birthdays that I never honestly realized. Um, so I thought, hey, make a great video. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I will be turning um, a ripe 36. Um, for those of you who don't know what a birthday is, uh, the birthday is the anniversary or how many years since your day of birth or your date of birth, I should say. Um, obviously, I assume most of you would know that. Um, but there are some other really interesting facts that when I was going through the Wikipedia um, that I found out about birthdays that I had no idea about. Um, so I thought, hey, why not say a few things about them? Um, and also, I'm going to touch on something that is near and dear to my nerdy heart, and that, of course, is the idea of uh, something called the birthday problem. It's a statistical analysis um, problem that uh, is non-intuitive for most people and I thought would be really fun to explore. Um, but yeah, so birthdays. Uh, turns out not everyone in the world celebrates it, um, it's including our history. Um, Apparently, back in the Roman days, they were pretty hedonistic about their birthdays, so they really, really celebrated it. Uh, same went for the Persians. Um, whereas with some of our more modern religions, um, like early Christianity, um, certain um, Muslim beliefs, and uh, certain uh, Judaic uh, beliefs, they're kind of against them for some reason. Um, I couldn't really find a lot of good information as to why, um, but uh, it seems that now in modern days, um, especially in Western culture, that uh, birthdays are, it's fine to celebrate them. Um, so yeah, uh, kind of interesting. I would have never thought that. And then it brought about the idea of uh, how we figured out the idea of a birthday. So um, obviously in modern days, we're based off what we know as a solar calendar, which is essentially saying how, how many times have we rotated around the sun uh, since we were born, essentially. Um, but of course, as we all know about the history of physics and astronomy, uh, we didn't always know that we rotated around a big ball of nuclear reactor um, known as our sun. So kind of brings back the idea that, you know, we had to figure out through very early astronomers and people who just took extremely accurate measurements of the sun in the sky, uh, that they realized that there was a pattern of where the sun was in the sky every single day. And that pattern seemed to repeat itself every 365 days. Now, um, it technically, now that we've like have insanely accurate measurements, we know that it's about 365 in one quarter day, um, which is why we have a leap year and, uh, people born on February 29th technically, um, have fewer birthdays. Although, um, I mean, it's kind of inaccurate since they are still, you know, they still went around the sun, you know, four times in one birthday so it's a little weird but um yeah uh and then uh you know kind of then started to get into more statistical stuff so um they uh harvard university uh they brought on research where they looked at birth records in the united states and between 1973 and 1999 september 16th was the most common birthday in the united states and december 25th was the least um apparently holidays people don't give birth on holidays i don't know if it's like people are able to mentally suppress the ability to go into labor on specific holidays but the most or the, the least common holidays that people give birth are uh 
4th of July. Um, I believe it said, um, so yeah, 4th of July, there was uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then uh, New Year's Day. Um, and those all happen to be holidays, at least here in the United States, um, for 4th of July anyway, that are hard set. Um, many of our holidays will say, oh, you know, um, we're going to celebrate Martin Luther King Day on the third Monday of January, um, things like that, instead of picking a very specific day. That way we can have a three-day weekend or something like that. Um, but in like the case of 4th of July, we're not going to be like flexible with that date. It's a very specific date. Um, and so for some reason with those specific dates, we somehow or another, um, as human beings are able to suppress going into labor around that time. And as a result, we have the fewest amount of, of birthdays on those particular days. Um, so I found that really, really interesting. Um, and then, so another common misconception. So I knew about that, the idea that, or not the idea, but the fact that uh, a lot of people are born um, in the fall, uh, like around the September, um, I think August and July were also really common uh, months that people are born in. Um, and a common misconception of that was the idea that, oh, well, you know, that, that would mean that you were conceived during the winter months when the nights are longer, it's considerably colder, people tend to stay inside more often. Um, but then there was a study that came out of New Zealand that showed that the most common birthday is still September 29th and the least common is December 25th. And for those of you who don't know, uh, New Zealand is in the Southern Hemisphere and there are here in the Northern Hemisphere, um, when it's our winter time, it is their summertime. So they have the longest days and it's the warmest down there during those months. And so that kind of goes against that idea. And apparently it's mostly just comes down to the fact that for the majority of the world, our major holidays are around the winter time. So uh, most of the world celebrates New Year's. We celebrate some sort of holiday around Christmas time, whether it's Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, something along those lines. Um, and then generally there's some kind of like a fall festival or, or something like that too. Um, so yeah, apparently the holidays, maybe getting days off, um, visiting places, going on holiday, uh, tends to create more babies apparently. So that was really, really interesting. And so, yeah, um, that was me deep diving birthdays. And then I came across one of my now new, one of my newer favorite statistical things. So I, I have a degree in economics and we studied statistics a lot. It was a really important facet of our education because statistics was our way of observing how, um, economy and society interacts with one another and we would analyze that data and we'd use statistical analysis to do so. Um, and so there was something known as the birthday problem. So the birthday problem is this somewhat counterintuitive thought that um, it does not take very many people for you to eventually get to a point where it is inevitable or literal, almost statistically impossible that two of those people aren't going to share the same birthday. So um, here's the scenario for the birthday problem. So imagine you're getting random people and these random people have an equal chance of having any day of the year being their birthday. Now, obviously, if you just grab one person um, or let's just say it's yourself, there's no one else to compare to. So there's a 0% chance that you're going to share a birthday with somebody else. So you grab one person and you're like, okay, well, what's your birthday? And then you, what are the chances that that one person shares your birthday? Well, it's one out of 365 if we don't count the whole leap year thing. So we, that's a really small chance. I mean, one out of 365, that's, 
it's not very likely that that would happen. But this is where it gets interesting, and I'll explain the math behind this, but um, at 23 people, so let's say you, you take 22 other people and you basically put them in a room, let's make sure they're socially distanced, and we have them all say what their birthday is. At that point, at just 23 people, you are at a 50.7% chance that two of those people share the same birthday. Only 23 people. Pretty nuts. Um, and then where it gets even crazier is at around 60 people, that's about the point where it is over 99% probability that two of those people, two out of 60 people or more, I guess, um, will share the same birthday. 99%. Um, and then the number just gets absolutely and incredibly ridiculous um, when you get to like, you know, 364 people. Um, essentially, it's, I think you're probably more likely to win the lottery like multiple times in a row than it would be to collect that many people at random and have none of them share the same birthday. Um, and so this just kind of got my brain working. I'm like, how does that work statistically? Like, it seems a little counterintuitive in that it, it, I, it doesn't feel like that, that probability should shoot up so, so quickly. Um, well, the way a lot of statisticians um, do this, and I here live in Las Vegas, the world of gambling and let me tell you, there's a lot of statistics that go into gambling, and there's a really good reason why the house has an advantage. But they will often look at not necessarily what are the chances that that next person is going to have the same birthday as, as you or somebody else. What they'll do is they'll look at what are the chances that the next person you grab is not going to share a birthday with anyone else in the room. And so you get this um, this kind of compounding um, equation that ends up happening. So, um, for instance, let's, let's look at the first thing where I just grab one person. So I grab one person and we can say that the chances that that person is not going to have the same birthday as me is 364 out of 365, which is again, really, really close to one. Um, so it's like 99 point whatever percent. Um, and so then we grab another person. So what are the chances that the next person isn't going to share a birthday with either of the first two people, um, saying that those first two people did not share the same birthday at that point. So we're, we're kind of looking at the, I guess, best case scenario. And so what we would say there is 363 out of 365. So what you do is you take the 364, you multiply it by the the 363 um, over 365, really big number, like fractions, I know. Um, but you keep doing that. And what we find is it doesn't take very long until all of a sudden, by multiplying those over 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to, you know, 60, that you get a very, very, very small number, which um, means that it's a very unlikely that you're going to have that many times in a row that you're going to grab someone who isn't going to share the same birthday as all the other people that are already in that room. Um, and it's one of those statistical things that is exploited oftentimes by, again, I live here in Vegas, those statistics can be exploited by, um, you know, slot machines or specific table games that where at first it seems like, hey, I have a pretty decent chance. Like I have a 49.9% chance to win double my money or something like that. Um, but what the house and what these casinos know is that if you do that same thing over millions and millions of times, it compounds on itself and it gives the house a pretty clear advantage and it explains why they can afford to spend millions to billions of dollars building these fancy casinos. 
So yeah, um, really interesting. I'm gonna make sure I put all of my sources. Um, it's pretty much just a couple of Wikipedia articles down below um, with some of the interesting stuff. Um, oh, and one last thing was uh, I was, it, it took me down this rabbit hole of, of the lunar year because when I was looking at it, um, there's a lunar calendar which is extremely similar to our solar cal calendar. Um, basically, the moon goes through a full cycle once every about 30 days or so. And that actually explains how we have, um, why all of our months are roughly around 30 days. Um, blew my mind. I had no idea that the lunar calendar is what determined our our monthly cycles that we have throughout our year. Um, and so with these lunar calendars, they basically were like, they, they basically said, okay, 30 days times 12. It's not exactly 365, but it was pretty close. And that's the lunar calendar, which is about, I want to say, if I remember correctly from the article, about 11 days short of a normal solar year. So they, they were losing like 11 days, but um, that lunar calendar was used for a long time to determine birthdays and things like that as well. And is also how we have, you know, 30 day months now, um, granted some months are shorter or longer than others, but on average, our, our month is about 30 days. Really interesting. Never thought I would learn so much looking up something that I thought was going to be a really mundane subject is birthdays, but there you go. You learn something new every day. And, uh, it's what I, I love about just looking things up and being curious. Um, I encourage everyone who's watching this to be curious. If you have friends, family who are curious, don't suppress it, you know, point them in the direction to where they can find the information that they're looking for. Um, and, uh, cultivate that curiosity because, uh, I, I think this stuff is awesome, amazing. And I, I love feeling like I'm getting smarter every time I do one of these videos. So I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, I'm just going to throw it out there. If you put happy birthday in my comments, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, if you liked my video again, give it a like, if you disliked it, dislike it, that's cool too. And uh, if you want to add to the discussion, feel free to throw something down in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, if there's some topic you think would be interesting for me to look up, uh, feel free to throw it in the comments as well. And I'll, uh, I'll definitely look at them, especially since I'm still a very small and new YouTube channel and don't get very many comments to begin with. Um, but I hope you really enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks.